to geometry, and we all want to give a shout out to the basketball players. Hello. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? What's about my life? All right. So everybody <laughs> said hi. And now we're not do <laughs> all right. Fine. Uh, hey, Mom. All right. So <laughs> here we go. Chapter six test review. Things that you need to know. First of all, with no notes, um, you need to be able to know the different types of polygons and their spelling. You have these in your notes, so I'm not going to take a whole long time to add this up here. However, this is something you need to know. Watch out for the spelling. Remember, they all end in A-G-O-N. A-G-O-N, except for triangle and quadrilateral. So you are just going to need to be able to study those things and know them and do really well at them and know that you can. Uh, we're going to spend most of our time t today reviewing the uh, the last three sections, since we were never quiz quizzed on the last three sections. You are also responsible to know how to do everything that's on those first two quizzes, 6-1, 6 You should all have your copies of that. I told you about that yesterday, so hopefully everybody does. Um, we'll take any questions you have on those quizzes once we get to the end of the review on the uh, the end sections. So working from the back end to the front end, we need to first take a look at kites. As a matter of fact, I want to just draw this fresh. Um, things that you need to know about kites. First of all, you need to know that kites have perpendicular diagonals. So if I draw the diagonals first in a kite, those two diagonals do have to make a right angle. Okay, kind of like a cross. Maybe it would be, it can be drawn sideways or in any kind of angle that you would want it to be drawn at. But the drawing the diagonals first, we can actually make a kite just like if you were building a kite to fly. So we have our diagonals for this kite have to be perpendicular. That's our first fact that you need to know about a kite. These sides are supposed to be absolutely straight. Okay. Um, another thing that you need to know is that exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. Now for this kite that I drew, it's this angle over here is congruent to this angle over here. The other two angles can't be congruent. Okay. So just exactly one pair of opposite angles is congruent in a kite. So if like um, the other opposite pair, well, it would be like a Yeah, if the opposite pairs, it would be a, um, a parallelogram. <laughs> and parallelograms can never be kites, and kites can never be parallelograms. Okay, they're two completely different figures, except they have four sides. They're all quadrilaterals, but that's about it. Um, they also have two pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. That's actually in the definition of a kite. So you have to have two pairs of consecutive congruent angles. So that's this part right here. This, this pair, they're right in a row. Two pairs, here's the other pair, of consecutive congruent sides. Okay. And then the opposite sides of the kite can't be congruent. So this one cannot be congruent to this. This cannot be congruent to this. Opposite sides congruent would um, would mean that you would have maybe a trapezoid if you had one pair, or maybe a parallelogram. But a kite cannot have opposite sides congruent. Right? Now, most of the information on kites will show up in the bonus section. However, you want to get every point possible on your test. I, I'm expecting that most of you will get all the bonus points. Okay. I'm expecting it, Imani. Okay. All right. Now, uh, backtracking another section, we have to talk about trapezoids. Trapezoids. Now, there's a lot of things written here. I don't want you to necessarily process it all at one time, okay? 
But these are all the different things that you're going to need to know. I have a, a few examples here. I should probably get rid of this answer. I should probably get rid of this answer. Oh, that's okay. Um, first thing you need to know is that the length of the mid segment is half the sum of the bases. Okay, so this first statement here is really what this example is all about. The mid segment, actually, to technically be correct, we should draw in these to show that we actually have a mid segment. But the length of this mid segment has to be half of the sum of the bases. Okay, so for this particular example up here, how will we find the answer? Frankie? Add 10 and 8 and divide by 2. Good. So you'd add the 8 and 10 and divide by 2. So you divide by 2 because there's two in the box, right? Yeah, because there's two sides. It's really the average. It's really the average of the bases. So 8 and 10 is 18 divided by 2 is 9. Oh my god, a light bulb moment. Good. Okay, so uh, 18 divided by 2 is 9, so our x equals 9 for this top example. All right, this uses the same information, all from this. The length of the mid-segment is half the sum of the bases. If you're given the mid-segment and you're given one of the bases, then you need to be able to find the other, ba the other base. Okay, so for that problem, Um, we have the other base, we're going to call that x. So how would I set up my problem then? We're, we have to add the bases. So 10 plus, no, not 10 plus. We have to add the bases. So x, 6 plus x. 6 plus x divided by 2. There's your two bases. Divided by 2 equals the mid-segment. The mid-segment in this case is 10. Okay? So you have a little bit of algebra to do on something like that. Uh, if, you had a whole, if you had variables here and variables here and variables here, you would still do the same process. Okay? Like that would be a good bonus idea. Um, if you had variables here, variables here, variables here, you would add the two bases, divide by 2, and that equals the mid-segment. So then we could solve this, multiply both sides by 2. Wow. Six plus x is 20, so x would equal 14. So our, our extra base in this case would be 14. So you'd have uh, 14 on, on one side, you'd have 6 on the other side, and then 10 in the middle. So that's just a reverse question. Uh, yes, definitely. This one, um, more directly, this one beef it up a little bit and you would have it possibly for a bonus. Okay. So you should make sure that you understand the concepts. Um, on this particular test, I could really have made the bonuses just regular questions. So I really am expecting and hoping that most of you will get most of the bonus points. So let's just go with that. Okay, now I'm not changing any of the top words here, so don't get upset when I just change to the next slide. Okay, this is still the same ones, but I wanted to clear it off so I can write a little bit more in here. Wait, do we need the bottom of that last one? Down here? Yeah. This part? Yeah. You should write that down. Okay, hold on. Okay, so you haven't got Sorry. that. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. 
Alright, so this is the same top words. Uh, you need to know that the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Okay, and I actually accidentally wrote that twice. The base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So I guess it must be important. So an isosceles trapezoid, what is an isosceles trapezoid? Two congruent sides, right? So the isosceles ones actually are the ones that, we can't call it regular, but they, they're they very, very um, symmetric. So you have these two sides are congruent. Trapezoids, so that means that these two are parallel, so that's for an isosceles trapezoid. Yes? Would the base be top or bottom? The base angles? Yeah. The base angles are here. Oh, angles. I was thinking. Sorry. And here. The bases themselves are the segments. The base angles are the angles that are in those two corners. So the base angles of this isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Same with this. The base angles are congruent. Just kind of made, I guess that must be important. Then. <coughs> um, the legs are congruent. That's actually what makes it an isosceles trapezoid. Um, it has two congruent sides. It's just the same words saying the same thing. It has exactly two congruent sides. The other sides cannot be congruent. If the other sides were congruent, we'd end up having. Um, we end up having parallelogram. So we can't have that. These two sides can't be congruent. These two would have to be for an isosceles trapezoid. And then we have that one other fact. The isosceles trapezoid has congruent diagonals. So congruent diagonals means here to here is equal to here to here. Okay, so it would be fair if you were given the length of this segment to know that that's the same as this one. It would be fair if I gave you that this was 70 for you to figure out how big this one was and this one and this one. Okay, um, that's all things about trapezoids. So even though you weren't quizzed, it's not real heavy duty information, but you still need to know about the trapezoids. Good. So this will be on, will this be the extra or will this actually be the test? It's on the test. So you need to know it. All right. Um, next one. I have a whole series of questions here. And I'm going to erase the answers real quick because I forgot to. Um, that we want to go through and find out. I'll memorize the answers, please. I got want to think about them. <laughs> Okay? All right, we want to think about them as we go. All right, what kind of quadrilaterals have congruent diagonals? Okay, congruent diagonals. There's actually a couple of different ones. Squares. Squares. That's one. I'm sorry, what did you say, Monty? Rectangles. Rectangles, sure. No? No? Um... <laughs> Only special rhombuses, not all rhombuses. Is it a now, rhombuses no. have diagonals that bisect each other. And then I'm hearing the other one that we just talked about. Isosceles trapezoids. Anthony? Do you have to put all of them or just one? Oh. Um, all now, the questions won't be asked in the same way. So, but you need to know that this is true, okay? So I'm kind of maybe covering a question or two. I'm covering a concept with this particular question. So these questions are just things that you need to know, but they may not, they won't be phrased in that way, okay? Can a parallelogram be a trapezoid? Why not? Because the base angles can be the angles can be Okay, I heard a couple things. Uh, Preston, tell me one. Luke, tell me one. Antonia, tell me one. Because I heard you all, but you were all saying something different. Trapezoid can only have two parallel sides. 
Good. One pair of Good. Only parallel one pair of parallel sides, sides and a parallelogram has well two pairs. Two pairs. Good. Yeah. Luke, what were you going to say? Um, same thing. Same thing, Anthony. The opposite angles are congruent in the trapezoid, and they are in the parallelogram. Good. Opposite yeah. angles aren't congruent in a trapezoid, and they are in a parallelogram. So definitely, a parallelogram cannot be a trapezoid. Can a square be a rhombus? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, are all squares rhombuses? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Are all rhombuses square? No. No. Not all rhombuses are squares. You can have a rhombus. Isn't a rectangle rhombus? Uh, no. Oh, shoot. Well, actually, <laughs> well, that's it's only half no, Amani, because if you have a square, which is technically a rectangle, then that is a special case that is also a rhombus. Okay. So, in general, most rectangles, the ones that you're used to seeing and thinking about, would not also be a rhombus, but it can be if it's a square. Okay? All right. So, that's... That's those. It may take a little bit longer to write than actually to understand for these questions. And we'll bring them back a little later. All right, let's get rid of these answers real quick. Oh, you did this for the first one. Yeah, I did. Okay, are all parallelograms rectangles? No. Some of them are, but not all of them. Remember when you're answering true-false questions, the only time you can say true to a question is if every if it's true all the time. Okay. Are all rectangles parallelograms? Yes. 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 Definitely. All rectangles have to be parallelograms. It's part of the definition of a rectangle. Rectangles are special parallelograms. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four congruent angles. Okay, so if a quadrilateral is a par parallelogram, do the diagonals bisect each other? Wait, what do you mean by bisect? Bisect, cut each other in half. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, parallelograms, it's just one of the traits of a parallelogram you need to know. The diagonals bisect each other. Um, if the diagonals bisect each other, does it have to be a parallelogram? Yeah. yeah, it does. Okay, this is one of those where the statement and its converse are all true. All right, when you come back from lunch, we will finish lunch. We were we were talking about these questions. And we had ended with if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, it has to be a parallelogram. It's one of the traits, one of the things that we could prove. Um, just having a quadrilateral with bi bisecting uh, diagonals, you have to have a parallelogram. So that's important for you to make sure that you wrap your mind around. Once again, in true-false questions, um, you only say it's true if it's true in every case. And if there's any exception, you have to say false. Okay? Uh, let's move right along. What kinds, what kinds of parallelogram, what kind of parallelogram has to have congruent diagonals? What kind of parallelogram has to have a rectangle and a square? So all rectangles are square, so rectangle would cover it, but we'll write both. A rectangle has to, and also a square has to have congruent diagonals. <clears throat> now since it says what kind of parallelogram, we can't say the SS is trapezoid. Because remember, trapezoids can't be parallelograms. Parallelograms can't be uh, trapezoids. They're two completely different figures. All right, so if we have the diagonals of a parallelogram congruent, does it have to be a rectangle? Well, let's think, is there a possible way to have a parallelogram with congruent diagonals that's not a rectangle? 
from the nose. Yeah. So, yeah, so it has to be. Okay, if the and diagonals are parallel, if I want to know it, then yes, it has to be. Does it have to be a square? No, no, no. Does not have to be a square. It can be a square, but it doesn't have to be. Does it have to be a rhombus? No. No. Actually, there's only one possible case where it could be, and that would be a square. Okay, so you've got to make sure that you have those things all sorted out. Uh, you have your quizzes. Uh, just to re reiterate, you have to be able to identify if you have a parallel. Uh, you have to identify if you have a polygon or not. Okay, that came from your quiz. You have to know concave and convex. Okay, concave and convex. This is straight off of your quizzes. You should have them out in front of you. Make sure you're studying those and put them on your things also. You have to be able to draw and count diagonals in a figure. Okay, um, if you have your quizzes out in front of you, I'm just going through quiz 6-1 and 6-2 right now. I'm reiterating that you need to be able to do these things. So once again, concave, convex, you need to know what regular means. Number 17 through 20 are those formulas. You need to be able to find um, the sum of the interior angles. You need to be able to find each interior angle. You need to find the sum of the exterior angles. And you need to know each exterior angle. So you need to know those formulas and how to solve for those. Okay. Um, was there any questions on the first quiz that I just need to go over any more times? No. And then at the second quiz, 6364, that was the one that covered parallelograms. Finding the missing pieces of a figure like that, um, where you've got the parallelogram and you need to be able to find the missing angles, the missing sides. So, oh, that's a horrible parallelogram. All right, let's shape recognize. We'll make it a little bit, a little bit nicer. Okay, so finding the missing pieces, that's important for you to be able to do. So if you were, if we know that A, D is 8, what else equals 8? Oh, AC equals 8. Okay. If we know that measure of angle BAD is 60 degrees, what else is 60 degrees? Oh, BCD. BCD, good. <coughs> measure of angle BCD is 60. So, knowing that that, you know, assuming that this is a parallelogram, which I'm telling you that it is. Uh, how big would measure of angle ABCD? 130. 130, are you sure? Positive? Oh, yes. How much is 130 plus 60? I think that you would do 60 minus 180. Good. 180 minus 60, which is. 120. 120. Okay. It was a mental math mistake. That's why I said, are you sure? Um, 120 plus 60 is 180, so that one's 120. Is there another one that's 120? Uh, yes. Um, which one? ABC. ABC. Good. So ABC is also 120. Okay, so those type of problems, uh, they're important for you to know. Uh, if, for example, if AB was 6, what else would be 6? CD, CD equals 6. Okay, good. So you've got those things. They had all those true-false. Now we kind of went through a lot of true-false scenarios with the questions that I asked you already. Um, watch out for that. Also, there was the problems with the distance formula on that quiz. 
you had to use the distance formula to find out if the opposite sides were congruent. And knowing the opposite sides were congruent could tell you if you had a parallelogram. Okay, if they are congruent, then you do have one. If they're not congruent, then you don't. Uh, theorems 6, 7 through 6, 10. Okay, you would need to be able to identify them. Oops. 6, 7 through 6, 10 by pictures, just like we did on the quiz. So you do have access to the back of the book for those, but right in the directions for those questions, it'll say use theorem 6, 7 through 6, 10. So if you pick 6, 5, it's going to be really hard to have any sympathy for you because it tells you what theorem numbers you have for your choices. So please make sure that you know those well and that you're ready for those. Um, and then the rest belongs to you. You need to make your OneNote sheet front and back. You are still allowed to use that section in the back of the book, page 737, and that little section with the theorems and the postulates and all those things. Any last minute questions? That's nice. That's for all of you that are down there. You will be just finished converting. All right. Uh, that's it. Question, Rebecca. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on.